Hi, my name is Tania Harvey, and the comedy I chose to talk about in this video today is Coco. So, in this video, I will be talking about, I will be approaching different topics. I will be talking about the price trend, the price trends, the imports, export, well, countries that import and export Coco, um, the uses, the uses and the firms of Coco, um, major events that happen in the Coco market. And basically, um, projections. So any like um, predictions that experts have in the future that will happen in um, in the future that will happen in the future based in the in the market of cocoa. So the first topic I will be approaching is the price trends. So right now, as I am making this video, I am looking on finance.yahoo.com. So the price the currency so right now it shows like the prices the currencies the um it basically just shows everything of how like what's going on how the price delays or it increases in the um cocoa market so the currency in usd is two thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars the price of cocoa has changed over the last five years by negative 18.48%. The open is $2,439. High is $2,915. Low is $2,438. Close is $2,744. And the volume is 41.37K. Over the last 30 days, the price has changed by 13.15%. The open is $2,664. High is $2,746. Low is $2,663. Close is $2,744. And the volume is 31.55K. The next topic I will be talking about is the users and the firms so the most common uses for cocoa is chocolate bars candies drinks and pastries so basically like there's different types of cocoa you can use you can use cocoa powder um yeah that was one you can use cocoa powder and like different types of things cocoa powder cocoa beans um for pastries people use cocoa to make like different type of things like cakes or chocolate pie, chocolate cake. Um, people, for their drinks, people use cocoa powder. For their chocolate bars, people use cocoa powder. Um, the largest companies involved in the supply of cocoa is Mars, Hershey, Cargill, and Blommer. The largest companies involved in the demand of cocoa is Barry, Calabau, AG, Olam, International, and Nestle SA. Barry, Calabau is basically the largest production of cocoa um i ref i read that in an article the, um, the next topic i will be talking about is imports and exports so countries that import the most of cocos are netherlands the usa germany and france other countries import cocoa but those were the ones that had the highest percentages when i did my research those had the highest percentages of um cocoa being imported well countries that import cocoa um i will read those percentages right now um okay so for importers germany was 10.1 percent netherlands was also 10.1 percent france was 7.3% and the highest was the United States and they had 11.2%. So countries that exports the most of cocoa is also Germany and Netherlands, um, Ivory Coast and Belgium. Same for what I said for the countries that import, those were the ones that had the higher percentages so for exporters, Germany 
um, had the highest and now it's 10.5%. Netherlands was 8.7%. Ivory Coast was 9 and Belgium was 6.5%. Mary Jerry, um, so now we'll be talking about the Meiji event in the Coco production. So basically, the first Meiji event that um happened was farmers in the east of Ivory Coast, um, the world's biggest cocoa producer. They were giving up on their um plantations because of financial problems. They felt like they were weren't getting or they felt like they weren't getting or making enough money from um cocoa. So it's like they couldn't, they didn't have enough money to continue um, doing their plantations because um, they didn't have enough money or they were having financial problems. The government raised incomes by 30% to keep farmers in the industry. Um, another problem occurred in Indonesia where the cloning experience in 2009 um, made the harvest decline, beset on all sides by disease disease old age and the cocoa pop boria a tiny moth that is the bane of asia's cocoa growers so basically um the cloning experiment in 2009 um it went left because they um made they did this cloning experiment to basically like i read in the article they um basically did this experiment experiment to um and make sure the crops well the cocoa farms were presented from um disease resistant fast growing seedlings and that went left so now that that happened um production was 6000 tons a year and it went down to 490000 um also, the world's largest chocolate company, Barry Callabout, what I was talking about earlier, that was um, the largest chocolate company. Um, they experienced a 25% hike in cocoa prices caused partly by the Ebola crisis. Um, the Ebola crisis basically messed up everything. Like they weren't the only company that was um, experiencing something. So, when a come when that happened, the company um told people that for some time that consumers will be facing a chocolate crisis unless production can be increased to meet and grow in demand. Also, I read in the article it said that I'm sorry. Um that cocoa beans has increased by almost two thirds since two thousand twelve. And that the hike was one of the sharpest since the um the commodity trader nicknamed Chalk Fender bought up seven percent of the world's cocoa beans value at six hundred fifty eight million two thousand ten. So basically, since the Ebola crisis, it made the cocoa production hike up since years ago. Um, lastly, I will be talking about projections. So experts predict that the cocoa market in the near future will experience a shortage. Um, they said that they feel like that into 2030 and 2030, parts of West Africa will be too hot and dry to sufficiently produce cocoa. Um, they feel like the world may face a decline in cocoa production due to the combined effects of farmers choosing to switch to more lucrative crops and climate change. Um, in the article, it says that West Africa currently accounts for 70% of the world supply of cocoa beans, cocoa products sourced from the region. So these are raw materials in Hershey's chocolate production supply chain. So since that, since Cocoa, the production of cocoa will be affected um, in West Africa. There will be a shortage and the Hershey supply chain will also be threatened because of this change. Um, I personally would not invest in cocoa because um, over I read in an article that oversupply of cocoa could put pressure on prices. 
Also, that cocoa is a volatile commodity. So there will be wins and loses. You Sometimes you could gain something from cocoa and sometimes there could be losses from it. So I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation where it's a win or, or lose type of thing. So me personally, I will not invest in cocoa. Thank you for listening and watching this video about Coco.